Guess what guys, it's back to school season. And that means you're gonna be spending a lot of time on your computer doing things like homework and research and video games. And that's why it's more important than ever to make sure that your online activity is safe. Norton Security has over 25 years of experience in protecting users from cyber threats. But not only that, Norton Security has a great suite of parental controls that allow me to keep an eye on what my daughter is doing and can keep her online activities safe. Most people don't even think about cyber threats until they've already been a victim. So don't be a victim. Keep yours and your family's online activity safe with Norton Security. What is going on everybody, Jay's Two Cents here, and we're gonna talk about a topic today that I think a lot of people kind of get hung up on, which makes it harder for them to choose the right graphics card for their next build or upgrade. Now graphics cards are usually the most expensive single component of your computer, which could make buying the right one or the thought of potentially buying the wrong one kind of nerve wracking and really start to wear uh, on your on your psyche when it comes to building your computer because you want to get it right you want to enjoy it and you don't want to regret any of your purchases so what we're going to talk about today is specifically the cooling options when it comes to your graphics cards what they mean and hopefully arm you with the information to be able to make the right choice the first time now there are technically five different types of coolers for graphics cards and today we're going to talk about the four of those that would pertain to people like you or me the fifth one being liquid nitrogen cooling which is usually only going to apply to those that are going for world record overclocks. I I'm highly doubt any of you are actually watching this video that would apply to LN2 when it comes to graphics cards, but I digress. But the first type of cooler we're gonna talk about here is the blower style cooler, and these can be found on OEM style cards from Nvidia and AMD alike. All of the reference style cards always have blower coolers on them, and the reason for that is this is a lot less dependent on the amount of case cooling available to it than something like a recirculating cooler, and we'll talk about that next. Now, the way this cooler works is it pulls air into the face of the fan, and then it exhausts it out the back of the card uh, through these, this vent right here. Now, typically these cards do tend to be louder because the fans run at a much higher RPM and they do tend to push the card to about its max temperature limits simply because there is a lot less volume of air moving through the cooler. Where would you want to use this cooler? Because on the surface, that kind of sounds like a bad idea, right? It's louder, it's a bit hotter, uh, but this is going to basically have its own sealed environment here for cooling. What that means is if you're using it in something like a small form factor build, like an ITX build, or even a small MATX build, a home theater PC build, it's a much smaller footprint of a card. It doesn't have a taller uh, PCB on it. It doesn't have a ton of fans, but most importantly, it exhausts all of the heat out through the card rather than forcing your case to exhaust the extra heat that the graphics card is gonna produce. The graphics card is the single hottest unit inside of your, yeah, I said unit, yeah, I know. It's the single hottest piece inside your system, which means that if you are using the wrong type of cooler in a small four factor build, then you could potentially make the card throttle and make everything else in your system, like your CPU, your hard drives, get way too hot. So this is where you would wanna use this cooler, something where airflow and size is definitely going to be a concern. Now the next type of cooler here, this is pretty much the most common one you'll find and you'll find a lot of people asking, well, why wouldn't you use this cooler? Well, like we already explained with the blower style cooler, it does have its use, it does have its applications where it makes sense. But most people tend to go with coolers like this, where you have multiple fans pushing air down on a massive heat sink that has copper heat pipes in there, doing the best it can to move the heat away from the card extremely efficiently, as well as very, very quiet. Now, because when you typically have more fans, they can spin at a lower RPM, push, pushing more CFM or volume of air through the heat sink, giving you much better temperatures. But one thing you have to keep in mind though, is the air that's being pushed down through these heat sinks it's coming out all sides of the card, all four sides. It's coming out the back, the bottom, the top, the front. And so that means that your case is gonna have to be able to handle the heat that your graphics card is gonna be putting off. The graphics card is undoubtedly the single hottest component inside of your system. So what that means is you have to make sure whichever case you're putting this in is able to exhaust that heat efficiently. So multiple exhaust fans, multiple intake fans, maybe a larger volume of air, like a larger uh, full ATX case, or even a high flow mid tower uh, is gonna be something you need to keep in mind with a cooler like this. If you were to take a card like this, and stick it in a small form factor build that only has say one intake fan and one exhaust fan, what's gonna happen here is the case is not going to be able to expel the, uh, the hot air fast enough, which means these fans are gonna ramp up because the card is getting hotter, which is only going to exacerbate 
I like that word, exacerbate, which is only going to exacerbate the issue by making it even hotter because the fans are speeding up, the graphics card's getting hotter, and the case cannot move that heat fast enough. And inevitably, you will end up thermal throttling even with a cooler like this because the case is not able to make the environment cool enough for the card, which is where something like this would definitely make sense. Now, for those people who want a little bit more exotic cooling, but they're not ready to go with something like a full custom water loop, over the last couple of years, we have seen the introduction of much more uh, of these hybrid style coolers. Manufacturers have taken the very popular all-in-one cooling units like you would find on a CPU, and they have modified them to fit on graphics cards, and then still use a fan here to cool things like VRMs and MOSFETs and memory chips on your graphics card. That's why they're called a hybrid, because they do have an air cooler unit for some parts and a water cooling unit for others. Now you're gonna find some varying styles of cooler on here. Some have no fan at all. Some still have a fan like this hybrid here from EVGA, um, but they all pretty much use a single 120 millimeter uh, radiator. We haven't seen any 240s yet. I have a feeling we might see some 240s in the future, but these definitely run the coolest of the three that we've seen so far, usually keeping temperatures around the 40, to 50 C range, which is very, very cool. Now you're gonna see a benefit to using hybrid coolers because your boost clocks on both AMD and Nvidia are not gonna be fluctuating nearly as much because the temperatures are more constant. You see less temperature spikes and the more constant and steady the temperature stays, the less GPU boost has to dynamically adjust the clock to keep things thermally controlled. But you have to make sure obviously in an environment with a hybrid cooler that you have an extra space for a 120 millimeter fan and enough clearance around that fan mount so that you can actually mount the radiator as well because obviously you have to account for not only the fan, but the radiator as you can see is a little bit taller, um, not necessarily wider, but it is definitely taller and thicker both top and bottom than a standard 120 millimeter fan. So although you might be able to fit a 120 fan, it doesn't mean you can fit the radiator. So you're gonna have to do some research on your case to make sure that you are able to um, you know, fit the radiator where your fan is gonna go. Now there's even some upgrades that you can do to these, which we've already taken a look at in a previous video, where you can change the fans and go push-pull and all kinds of stuff, where you can actually take a little bit more control over a hybrid cooler and get even better cooling by changing out fans and stuff, which is something you can't do with the two previous options we looked at with the blower style cooler and the multi-fan config. Now the last one we're gonna take a look at here, which happens to be my personal favorite, and that should be no surprise to you guys, is the full cover water block for custom water cooling loops. These are going to give you the best temperatures. These are going to give you the quietest operation. But uh, unfortunately, it comes a bit at a price premium where the block itself can run upwards of $120. And as you can see, this one doesn't have the backplate installed yet. I am putting a backplate on here where the backplate can run you another 30. So you're talking $150 on top of the price of the card to go with some sort of cooling functionality like this. Now, although these are gonna give you the best thermals, it does not necessarily mean though that you're gonna get better overclocks. I mean, it's gonna help a little bit, maybe an extra 25 megahertz at the most. Pretty much because we've reached a very interesting age of graphics cards where even coolers like the hybrid cooler are keeping these things cool enough to where we are hitting core lim limits and voltage limits long before we're actually hitting thermal limits when it comes to these graphics cards. Heck, even some of these air-cooled cards, you put them at 100% fan speed, it keeps the temperatures down in the 50, you're gonna find that you are not hitting temperature limits, but you are hitting core stability limits. And until you start doing custom VRMs and really high voltage and exotic cooling like LN2, you're never going to hit your temperature limits before you hit the limits of the core, at least at the way that they ship with their BIOS and voltage limits. It's really more of an enthusiast thing where you water cool your graphics card because you like to, not because you need to, which is kind of an exciting place where we are today, where you can get amazing performance out of your graphics cards without the need of water cooling, which only five years ago, you had to do water cooling if you wanted to get your max overclocks. There you go, that's that, the four main cooler types here. And uh, if you think I missed something, let me know down in the comments and add to this video. Lots of people come to these videos for information about making their next purchase. And as a community, we can all rise together and help the community be stronger with the correct knowledge out there, especially when it comes to things like water cooling and air cooling and such as that. As always, guys, you can hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter if you wanna have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I do the best I can to get to all of you, but good Lord, there is a lot of you. But with that said, it's time to go. As always, like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you're new here, and as always, we will see you in the next one. Take care.